The financing of education is at the heart of the educational crisis in many countries of the world. And Nigeria is not excluded. There appears to be a perennial crisis of funding and lack of definite structures and strategies in funding of education in Nigeria. The challenges of Nigerian education sector in general and its funding in particular could be traced to policy and strategy instability and inconsistency in efficiency and management. However, it's therefore important to prioritize education and our educational transformation from uh, the grassroots. The current administration must also understand the difference between the education that builds and education that manages. Joining us to discuss this is Stella Olubumi Francis, State Coordinator, Civil Society Action, Coalition of Education for All Lagos State Chapter. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Yes. I think that we're having this conversation at the right time where you have a new government on board. and We already understand, uh, you know, the crisis that the educational sector has been faced with over the years. Uh, what exactly do you think should be done by this administration, you know, in tackling the incessant strike action by ASU? Well, uh, for us as a coalition, we, we are so much interested in having a, an inclusive and equitable and quality education for all Nigerian citizens, all Nigerian children. And we advocate for uh, increase in the financing of education. We are all aware that a lot of times there is crisis, there is a uh, strike at the tertiary level, mainly because there are agitations for uh, lecturers increase in, uh, in salary, some infrastructures in the universities are on catered for, they are, on, they are not in the best of states. So to tackle this, you will definitely um, advise and advocate to the federal government led by our new president, President Tinumbu, to ensure that at the national level, there is an increase in budgetary allocations to education. Currently, we have about a single digit percentage for education budget at the national level, especially to increase this so that the incessant strikes by our lecturers will be curtailed, and our children will go to university, and their four years will be four years, and there will not, there will not be an endless uh, occurrence of strikes at the tertiary level. Well, um, some other pundits, I mean, those who are experts have suggested that uh, there's a need uh, to change the structure of funding of higher education in Nigeria. Uh, you know that the government has complained, the federal government said, we don't have funds, there's no money. And a lot of people are saying that it's time for full autonomy to be granted to universities. Do you really agree with this uh, school of thought? And if you have a reason to agree, then you, t you, you tell us the why. Well, personally, I don't agree with uh, granting full autonomy to the universities. We already have private universities that are catering for the high and mighty. The low class and the middle class have only access to these federal universities, which comes at a lower rate. Auto giving autonomy to university will e eventually lead to hike in school fees, which students might not be able to afford. I, 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 rec I reckon with the fact that federal government just recently, I think 24 hours ago, signed the student's loan bill, uh, which Oh, well, so uh, we're hoping that we have uh, Stella Lubimi connect with us, uh, sharing her thoughts on financing education. What a time to talk about, uh, you know, the educational sector in Nigeria, especially when you have, you know, the strikes going on, infrastructural, you know, issues have always plagued our 
high institutions, including, you know, almost all the sectors of, if you look at what are the primary sector, or you look at the tertiary. But I'm being told that we have our guests back. Stella, once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So you, you were talking about um, the student loan uh, and the importance of it to you. I think you were agreeing to that part. But some people think that this is actually, you know, not a solution. It doesn't even solve half of the problem. It will probably just, uh, you know, make the people more indebted, you know, to government, especially when you look at the ratio of unemployment uh, as at this moment. And if you juxtapose that with a student loan, then uh, some people think that, you know, yes, looks very brilliant, but this is totally not a solution to uh, financing of education in Nigeria. Yeah, you probably didn't hear me at a point. Because I, I, was, I was saying there are gaps in that loan. There are so much gaps because there, there are assumptions that once a, a, a student graduates and serves, there is automatic employment waiting for him or her, which is not the case, and then saying that if you are if you default, you go to two years imprisonment, criminalizing debt defaulting is just a no-no. So it's going to further impoverish our students, and to me, we have to look into this. I would rather think of giving students grants or scholarships rather than asking them to go on loans and, and the rest. I, I have a girl that graduated about four years ago that had not been able to get a job and eventually went on to go for master's and up to now doesn't have a job. What do you do in that kind of scenario? In a scenario where there are, there, there are strikes and a four year turns to six years, what does a student do in that? Does he or she continue to get impoverished by accumulating debt. All those are the things that our lawmakers must look into to ensure that this thing uh, Well, um, I, I mean, I wish we had, you know, like a smooth connection tonight. But however, the, the big question again is if the government cannot fund the educational sector or if we're saying funding the higher institution, it's, it's something that the government cannot. And on the other hand, it is expected that there be change in structure, allow, you know, the universities to be uh, in control, full autonomy be granted to universities so they can manage the affairs of the universities. And if you say, uh, so I was asking, I'm going to ask you this question now because we have to course down in no time. So if you're saying that, uh, the government on one hand is saying, we cannot fund, you know, uh, universities. We lack what it takes to fund. There are no resources. And on the other hand, you have people who are arguing that we should allow universities to uh, be autonomous. I mean, grant them some autonomy so they're able to manage their affairs, generate revenue, and run the university. And that's not the case. Then what then is the solution to funding, you know, education in Nigeria? Well, education is the right of every citizen of this country. Every, education is a right to every citizen in this country, and our governments must do their utmost. If uh, giving autonomy to university will, will jeopardize access and equity for our children, then giving autonomy does not make any sense. But if it is going to make the schools more effective and then give the students access at reasonable cost, then we, as a coalition, we are in for it. What we don't subscribe to is taking education out of the reach of the poor and the masses. That is what we don't subscribe to as a coalition. So, so what exactly is your um, postulation to the solution of funding education then? Well, as, as, actually, as a coalition, we, we are mostly into basic education. And as Sakefa Lagos, we, we follow the trend in Lagos. We follow the trend in Lagos. We see what the Lagos state government is doing. But we felt they could still do more as a state. We felt there is need to increase the budget. There, have been, there has been an incremental, uh, there have been increase, gradual increase, 
in the state budget of Lagos State, but we still believe that there is need to increase it further because we still have a lot of issues, a lot of issues of lack of furniture, lack of toilet facilities. Some, some schools are, are, are dilapidated, especially in the rural areas. Uh, there are still some issues of out of school, especially for the girl child. And that is one of the reasons why we feel Lagos State Government in particular, because we are in Lagos, Sakefa Lagos is in Lagos, we believe that Lagos State Government should go a step further by increasing the percentage a little more, at least something close to the UNICEF standard of 26%. Currently, I think Lagos State is about 11%. We are hoping that they will be able to put in more funds to monitor the out of school, to put machineries in place, to monitor out of school, to ensure that there are, there are enough furnitures, there are enough school in the, in the rural areas for the girl child and the marginalized to attend. Those are the basic things that we are advocating for in Lagos State and by extension, Nigeria. Well, um, th this is a point where, uh, you know, we have to let it go uh, at this particular time. Thank you so much, Olubami, uh, Stella, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. All right, that's it on the show tonight. Uh, thank you so much for making our time to be with us on Plus Politics. I am Messi Bopo. Have a good evening. <laughs>